I want to introduce you to Dr. Job Martin. Dr. Martin has had a very interesting background. Reverend Martin has a very boring background. First off, he was a dentist in uh, 1966, apparently. He got his de dentistry license. And in 1986, he got a degree in theology. Which, of course, is worth shit. Apparently, as far as I can tell, his thesis for his degree was on the New Age movement and the theological implications thereof in 1985. Wow, that's sure interesting. For the past 20 years, Dr. Martin has been lecturing students on incredible creatures that defy evolution. But Reverend Martin has been lecturing theology students on creationism, not real students. Evolution, as I was taught, uh, it all started with a thing called the Big Bang. No, evolution did not all start with a thing called the Big Bang. Big Bang cosmology has absolutely nothing at all to do with evolution. They say this Big Bang went kaboom and shot out hydrogen gas mostly. No, the Big Bang did not go kaboom. No, the Big Bang did not shoot out hydrogen gas mostly or otherwise. It took approximately 600,000 years before baryons formed, which is uh, you can look up baryon synthesis, and baryon synthesis pr produced mostly hydrogen and helium. Gravity, of course, condensed those gases into stars, and stars fused the hydrogen and helium nuclei into the heavier elements up to iron. Beyond iron, you need novas and supernovas. And the gas somehow turned to dust. The gas somehow turned to dust. We know how these, quote, dust forms, and we've known that for over 50 years, actually closer to 60 years. In fact, a woman got the Nobel Prize in Physics for explaining where, quote, dust comes from. Heliosynthesis. This clown is saying, somehow, fucking A. The evolutionists say it started dry, and then... <laughs> evolutionists? Here he's talking cosmology and planetology and how planets form, and he says, evolutionists? Why the not fuck not say astrophysicists or cosmophysicists or astronomers? Evolutionists? And so in the fall of 1971, I went to Baylor in Dallas and gave my first lecture. It was on the evolution of the tooth. And I talked about how these fish scales gradually migrated into the mouth and became teeth and a couple of my students... No! Fish scales did not migrate into fish's mouths and turn into fish teeth. There's a section on fish teeth found in Your Inner Fish by Neil Shubin. I should also point out that the first bones that occurred on planet Earth occurred in fish teeth. That is where bones originated, here on Earth anyways. Well, the first thing that we really studied together was this little bug called a bombardier beetle. And Why would a dentist believe he is a coleopterist? If you want to learn about the evolution of a beetle, or the beetle, or all of the beetles, you consult a coleopterist, not a dentist. Let's say if evolution is true, and you're evolving along here, and you don't have a defense mechanism, because that is the defense mechanism of the bug, so... Well, that is just fucking stupid. The current defense of any and all animals on planet Earth, living or extinct, are not their first defense mechanisms, and their ancestors had different ones. The bombardier beetle's defense mechanism evolved from previous defense mechanisms. We can see this is a observed fact by looking at its family members, its, its close cousins and its aunts and its uncles, and all the related beetles that the family of bombardier beetles belongs into. We can see precisely how it evolved. The bombardier beetle defense mechanism 
is not its first defense mechanism down its ancestral line to say the current one is the only one that could have possibly been is just bloody goddamn stupid. But, so, if evolution is true, it had to somehow evolve that. So let's say it's coming along here. Well, the first time it evolves the, the explosion, what does it do to the bug? Boom, you just splattered your bug. Okay. Nested hierarchies. God damn, that was easy, is also the correct answer. Okay, so splattered bug pieces don't evolve. So I thought, how, how, how could this have happened? Well, it... How, how, how could this have happened? This clown's entire argument is based upon his personal ignorance. One can see exactly how the bombardier beetle evolved its defense mechanism by looking, as I said, at its close family members. You can see the two chief uh, chemical reactions that make up the bombardier beetle's bombardier style are used in its kin as, number one, uh, a noxious smell that repels predators, and number two, a poisonous compound that kills predators when the compound is eaten and the, the bug that has that compound is eaten. That may not be a good thing for the particular individual bug having a predator eat it, but it is good for the species to have a predator eat one of the individuals and have that predator die. This is, of course, all about natural selection. Saying, how, how, how can it have evolved is just bloody stupid because Charles Darwin explained how 150 years ago. It doesn't blow itself up. It has another little factory inside itself that manufactures chemicals, a chemical, acts as a catalyst, so that when you squirt that chemical in with these other chemicals that are like in neutral, you get your explosion. Well, the first time it manufactured that little chemical, it, it, here it goes again, blew itself up again. But it doesn't. Why? The correct answer is nested hierarchy. This is basic kindergarten biology. The reason the bombardier beetle didn't blow itself up during its evolution of its current defense mechanism is because its current defense mechanism did not occur previously to its current defense mechanism. Nested fucking hierarchy. I should also note that at least 16 years before this creationist clown started spewing his bullshit, the biologist and scientist Thomas Eisner explained the defense mechanisms involved. He wrote a um, paper called Chemical Defense Against Predation in Arthropods. That paper was published in the year 1970 in Chemical Ecology uh, peer-reviewed magazine. The mechanisms on how the bombardier beetle evolved its current defense mechanism are already known. And yet this creationist clown is just asking, how, how, how could it have evolved? Read a fucking newspaper, you goddamn dentist theology PhD nut. Good fucking gods. But as long as it is a sequential explosion with his little legs, he can hang on. How would evolution explain a sequential explosion. This evolution does not explain anything. Of course, evolutionary theory does. The correct explanation is natural selection. I'm sure a dentist doesn't know this, and a theology PhD doesn't know it. Ask any biologist, and they will tell you. This little bug messes with all the theories of evolution. There is no such thing as all the theories of evolution. There is the theory of evolution. And nothing alive or extinct messes with the theory of evolution. That's just ridiculous. There is no way a slow, gradual process is going to produce this bug. Uh, yes, there is. The way is called evolution. But I began to realize, how could this particular little animal, for instance, evolve. Uh, it needed all of its parts, it needed everything there all at once, or you just don't have the animal. No, it did not need all of its parts when it evolved. If you look at the current version of the bombardier beetle, and look at its current defense mechanism, that has absolutely nothing at all to 
do with its previous uh, versions and its previous defense mechanism? The answer is nested fucking hierarchies. All of this is observed to be a fact. One can see how the bombardier beetle's defense mechanism evolved by looking at its living uh, family members. The moral of the video is when you're wondering how a particular species, any species, extent or extinct, evolve, don't ask a dentist with a theology PhD. I suggest asking someone who's actually studied the issue. Silly me.